with it. And it was interesting because uh, tourism flourished, even if it was not associated to Dracula automatically, even if it did not become an amusement park, tourism flourished because of it. So it, it's it, so you can make this kind of this kind of uh, choice, but you you can you have to make it um, intelligently, yes, to to give uh, to be, uh, to give some perspective to uh, to the viewer because uh, in this way you can you have to negotiate between what what he wants and what you want to give to them. I mean, she actually you 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 can um, you can educate that Western. Uh, I don't know, tourist who wants to see Dracula and everything. And he may well be very contempt about what he has seen if you, if you, um, I don't know, guide him uh, yeah. through that, through that. So I, I think this idea has a future. In my opinion, uh, of course, both are important, uh, economics and cultural policy, but uh, with, with an in intelligent cultural man management ship, if you want, uh, you can make it uh, flourish, not not uh, um, not um, destroying uh, the myth, and not creating the amusement park that uh, uh, I don't know, a Dracula park would would uh, would, uh, would do. So I think this is this is still, uh, to my my opinion, this is still a, a good idea, but it has to it has to be made intelligent. Because people do look up to these historical facts. They do look up. For example, uh, I told uh, Constance <clears throat> last night that uh, I saw, uh, it, during my, my flight to the US, I saw uh, five people around me who watched uh, the Da Vinci Code uh, on their screens. What, what does that say? Where well, they, they are fond of mystery, and but they, they are also fond of, of, of history. Some, some history in that story is still present there. They, they've seen Florence there. They've seen the, I don't know, the, the works of, of Da Vinci there. Uh, maybe with a little more scholarship, maybe with a little more uh, intelligent cultural management, you can make a great thing out of it. Yeah, well, and there are examples um, that we can think about, um, you know, a concentration camps turned into museums. Yes. Feed into kind of a, you know, the, there's the sort of popularized notion of it, and there's the historical notion. Um, when I was in, um, in Bucharest, there's the, I forget what it's called, but it's a museum of communism. Yeah. Right? And... Um, you know, which was done, you know, with some historical accuracy. But again, you know, there are kind of mistaken notions about communism, and so this was trying to present it. Um, but I guess one of the things uh, from your lecture, because you talked about the intermingling of myth and truth, so how historically accurate could a Dracula museum, say, be? Well, um... Just stick to the facts that we know, and not, uh, I don't know, not uh, exploit those facts to to one interpretation or another. Just that, that's, I, I think, uh, that's as far as history can get, uh, in my opinion. I mean, that that's an argument in itself. I mean, to be to be honest about your history and to present all the facts with uh, accuracy, I think this is this is a, an invitation in itself. If you have this kind of project, I, I don't think people will. I mean, people will have to judge. Would you have to? Will have to judge by uh, to judge by themselves. They are. They are the interpreters of their of their tourism. <laughs> they are the interpreters. So if you lay out the facts and do not give them a further or an over interpretation of the facts, I think they will be more content uh, than with having uh, ideologies or. Nationalistic point of views, or you know, you saw the the movie that was made, and the movie that was made. Uh, I may may I add something about the movie? The movie that was made, uh, you can you can uh, see it on YouTube. It's also with uh, English translation. Yeah, because it's very popular, of course, and it's you can also 
the script was good. I mean, the, the, the script was uh, in, in that uh, era of, uh, of communism uh, sponsorship, because it was just a common sponsorship of the, of the movies. It was a good script written by historians with the help of historians and everything. But the problem is it, it, was, was, it was too channelized towards, it was too focused on, on that image, which was a, was a fake image. It was not a true image. I mean, not a true, not a historical accurate image. Not, I'm not speaking about true history, not true history, but it was not a historical accurate image. All the chronicles, all of the chronicles, even the Russians, even the Russians say that he was, uh, I mean, amongst the tyrants of that age, he was the cruelest of, of them all. So something about that character has to be true to have those kind of, I mean, you have the Turks who are not uh, kind uh, now as rulers. You had the Russians, you had uh, Ivan the Terrible, another guy. Now, uh, you had everyone there, uh, but just this one uh, came out. Probably, so you had, you had some sources that corroborate. There are not just the German Saxons who say that he was atrocious. There are also the Turks and the Russians. And there, are, there, there is also a uh, character, for example, from the court of Matthias Corvinus, a Russian who was ambassador to the court of Matthias Corvinus, who uh, saw him personally, because he was, uh, I didn't have the time to explain this, but he was ex uh, in the last part of his, uh, of his um, life, he was imprisoned for 14 years uh, at the court, imprisoned, I mean, this time really imprisoned, for 14 years at the court, court of Matthias Corvinus. And he was still seen as a freak out there. For example, one of the stories, one of the stories which was related by, was uh, presented by the, the Russian ambassador to the Hungarian court, said that uh, during his time in prison, uh, he, uh, he had developed just like, uh, um, just like uh, the guy in, um, <laughs> in the, um, in the lunatic asylum, yeah, Renfield. Uh, he he developed uh, he developed a, a, fo a, a thing for impaling mice. So he, he something like his personality was really disturbed out there uh, about him. So you you well um, relate uh, related to what I've said before and uh, to the movie. You cannot say that. Uh, you, you cannot make a movie when you say, that, well, he was just a hero, a selfless hero, uh, um, I don't know, a hero of the people. He was not a hero of the people. He impaled the people, his own people. I mean, he, he was, no, so he was not, well, he was not, nothing of, of that, uh, of what the communist ideology wanted to make out of him was real. He was not a friend of the people. He was not. He came to power just of, out of his pure interest. He he saw no no connection to the people because he was a noble, and those were peasants. And, and in in those medieval minds uh, and times, uh, a noble uh, was a, a being superior to a peasant. He was ontologically superior. If you were noble, you were ontologically superior to any other else. To, you were equal only to only to your peers. That's it. So we cannot rewrite history. Just lay out the facts, lay out the simple facts, and let the uh, I don't know, the, the visitor, the tourist, the interpreter, the scholar, the academic, everyone to see it. Well, we have some time for uh, questions or continued comments on this, but uh, we'd like to open it up to just any question to you would like about yeah. Dracula in general. We will, uh, uh, Doctor is going to give some other lectures, but maybe you have something you're curious about or about Romania um, that you want to ask. Uh, so please do. Um, what, what is the current governmental situation in Romania? Uh, in, I'm just going to repeat it. So people the current so. governmental, in what, in, in just, just like governmental? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, we have a, well, we have a alternates to power. We have a democracy, parliament. Of course, there are many things happening uh, uh, with uh, 
the fight against corruption nowadays. The problem, the big thing here, the big thing now is the political fight against corruption, not the political fight, the judicial fight against corruption. So this disturbed all the hierarchies that were paid during this post-communist era, which were some of them, there, there were uh, hierarchies, political hierarchies, uh, uh, which were, were made uh, up uh, by uh, corrupt politicians. So our biggest, uh, our biggest challenge now is uh, this, this struggle against this, uh, this problem, because it is a real problem to me. It affects all the, all the things in, in society, unfortunately. So this fight uh, is the biggest issue now. So the, of course the politicians oppose it, some of them oppose it, the uh, liberal parties, uh, the more liberal parties uh, embrace it. Um, the ruling party now is the uh, former, well it's, it's the social democratic party, but this social democratic party was the first inheritor of the old communist party. You know? Yeah, because the the, the apparatchiks of the 1989 just uh, I don't know just crossed crossed the barrier and became uh, newly born politicians of the newly born um, social democratic party. So uh, that created a kleptocratic elite in time, creating a kleptocratic elite which ruled Romania uh, up to 2000, it ruled it like oligarchs. It was just like in Russia, you had the oligarchs, just, it was the Russian model, you had the oligarchs ruling the country, uh, taking up slices of the economy and buying out slices and everything. So now I think that the situation, uh, as we are in the European Union now, uh, of course I hope the European Union will Will further its plan and will continue with with uh, um, with its policies and not make anything stupid, uh, because uh, Romania is actually, as I told constantly before, is actually a, an outpost of Western world, all Westernizing there. It is the, is the whole this, the 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 only country in that area now which doesn't have a far right party as a ruling party. So it's the only country now which has a democratically elected president which is not far right, uh, which has not authoritarian or autochthonistic policies, nationalistic policies. Um, um, also, he's a German minor, minor, he's a German minority. We have we are an Orthodox country uh, from the Balkans, which with the German president. So this is very typical. This is very typical German. Uh, which was born there. He was he was part of the, the old German Saxon minority from Transylvania. So uh, it is an outpost of civilization, if you want, there, and of tolerance. You 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 well, there are struggles and everything, but uh, for example, the media is powerful. You have a powerful media, aggressive one. It's very aggressive against politicians. We had like two weeks, uh, two months ago, we had huge protests. I participated to one protest in Cluj. Huge protest against the government. Uh, the government wanted to uh, pass a law. Uh, no, 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 not a law, to pass a, um, a government order, something like this. Yeah. A government order on, uh, um, on, um, reducing the punishments for the, or eliminating the, even the punishments for the politically corrupted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a very risky and a very stupid, in my opinion, stupid, aggressive, stupid and risky move, who, who uh, brought people out on the streets. And in Bucharest there were almost 600,000 in the streets. In January, in Bucharest, and Bucharest has 2 million people. 600,000 were in the main square. It, uh, you saw the, you saw it. They had, they had a huge crowd, crowd which invented um, um, mobile lightning, lighting. So they, they light, they lighted the, 
themselves with mobiles. You know? So it was, it was like a sea, huge sea. You can see it on the internet. It's like, like a huge sea of mobile phones open you know, with lights. So it was a form of, of course, of uh, democratic processes. So that's why that government order were, was retracted. Yeah, but it was a move. <laughs> it was a very risky move. So that's, that's the situation now. We are fighting against, against um, we are still fighting. Uh, we are uh, holding together uh, as a democratic country. We have, most of the country has liberal views on, on big issues. Uh, we have a big diaspora from abroad. Almost three four, uh, to four million Romanians work in Europe. Mostly in Italy and Spain, we have a huge, huge minority. For example, in Italy, there are almost one, one point five million Romanians there. So that's that's almost a country. And you have one point five million Romanians working. It, it, it's the biggest minority now, uh, uh, biggest di diasporic minority in Italy now. One point five million Romanians working in Italy. You have one million working in Spain. Fifth. 500,000 in the UK. So everyone works abroad. We have understood the, the way Europe works with, with the, you know, with the flow of, of resources and work and everything. So I think it's, it's a country on, on the way to, on the way to, to good things, to development. But the development is slowed up by, by this elite, who is, of course, who is clinging on, on its privileges. On its power, yeah. So that's the situation in Romania now. Yeah. In in advance of the next lecture, some things you might want to look at just to inform yourself a little bit about Romania. Um, uh, Romania is known for quite a famous uh, school of painters, the Cluj uh, School of Painting. Um, uh, Cluj is C L U J. Um, you know, so you might want to look that up and see that there, the uh, contemporary art in uh, Romania is really important. And so that kind of goes against this notion of, you know, this barbaric kind of outpost, uh, you know, uh, uh, idea. Um, uh, in uh, 1989, there was an important revolution in Romania, and there was a film you can watch, and I always forget the name of it. So, you know, the the taking over the TV station. Oh yeah, well there are many versions. There, there is the the original uh, TV version of the thing, and there are other versions of yeah. what so happened. So there's you right. could watch that and kind of that was the downfall of Ceausescu, uh, but um, you know kind of along the lines of you know the, the this big protest of the people. And then the transition before 1989 to post 1989. So that might be something that you want to uh, take a look at. And if you get a chance, you know, maybe some pictures of contemporary Transylvania, so you don't have yeah. just this picture of the wild, of the wild, wild forest, <laughs> forest. You know, yeah. as romantically I, wonderful yeah. as that is. Yeah. 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 Yes. Great. So any last questions? If not, we'll go ahead and wrap up and. Um, as we're uh, putting things away, you can come up and talk to yes. them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, because I'm not an expert. But, you know, I learned. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, just that cute. That speaker, I didn't think was I like that you had. I don't know if this is I I love yeah.